So you walk into class, right? And there's this teacher and he's standing there, he's looking all cool. You hate these teachers who think they're cool and they got haircuts and they wear bow ties and all this stuff. Anyway, he says, hey bro, what is the acceleration of these blocks? Oh, and by the way, find each of these tensions, this one and this one, and find the normal force on the whole apparatus. Oh, and you can't use any other things except for M and R and baby G. So, you're coming at it kind of stressed out, right? But you know what you need to do. You need to start analyzing this, and there's probably gonna be some rotation, and they say, oh yeah, and by the way, there was this other thing I noted. This is a mass on a, uh, like a pulley. It's like a pulley E mass. It's like a massy pulley, but there's no friction. So there's an axis of rotation right here. And they tell you that the moment of inertia, well, the moment of inertia, I guess, would be, because it's a solid, um, what is it, a, a solid disc, you would say that it's one half m r square, and they're giving you this radius here, they call that lowercase r, but since the mass is actually three m, this moment of inertia ends up being three halves m times r square. Okay, so this is what we would anticipate, and they give that to us also. So I'm trying to find all of this stuff, and you know what the first step is, you just, cut off the question and start looking at this thing, right? Fine. First question is something about acceleration, wasn't it? Let me see, that was, it got a little bit disorganized right there. I'm thinking that we should start out working in, no, Violet's no good. Let's start out working with, we're mad at this guy for giving us this problem, so let's start out with some aggressive red right here. My first step is gonna be making some free body diagrams of everything, because if I'm ever gonna find accelerations, then I need to make free body diagrams. So my first step is a free body diagram for this little M right here. This little M of mine has MG pointing down, and there's also a tension pointing up. And this other guy is twice as massive, so it's uh, got a longer vector right here, and I'm gonna write 2mg pointing down, and there's a tension pointing up. And I immediately become uncomfortable. Sometimes students wanna say that the upward pull on this one is equal to the weight of that one, and the upward pull on this one is equal to the weight of that one. That's nuts, that's going way too far. You don't know yet. And another thing that's funny about this such situation is those are two tensions, and it's the same dang rope, but the rope might be causing this thing to rotate, in which case the rope might be exerting a net torque on this pulley, in which case the tension over here might not be the tension over here. That's dangerous, and I just don't wanna assume that they're the same thing, so I'm gonna call this tension one over here, and I'm gonna call this tension two over here, T1. T2, and that way I won't get confused about periods either, <laughs> if we have to worry about periods. So, there's one more object that needs a, um, <clears throat> a uh, free body diagram, and that's this loopy thing over here. And my students took this problem, and this is where they struggled, on these three free body diagrams. A lot of people got those, but then they started wondering about what the tensions were. This guy here is a mess. We'll put a dot at the center, and we'll start acknowledging that there are some forces on the sides, and these forces might cause rotation. So they are torquey forces, and here's one of them pointing that direction. That would be a positive torque and it's called T1. It's just T1. There it is pointing down, okay, and causing a positive torque. That T1 is not the torque, but it's causing the torque. If I calculated the torque, I'd probably need this distance over here, which is R. That's great. And then I've also got a T2 on this side. I don't know how long they are, but they're probably not the same length because that would be a fantastic coincidence. So I've got two forces down. Wait a second, doesn't this thing have itself its own mass? Of course it does. So there's probably also 3mg pointing down, okay, and then also there's gonna be a normal force pointing up of some unknown value, but we kind of get the impression that maybe all of these forces are going to be adding to zero because there's no net force on this guy. There might be a net torque on it, but the center of mass of that's not moving because the whole thing's sitting on a table. It'd be cool if you put this on a balloon though and saw what the balloon, okay, but we're not gonna do that. Our goal is to find accelerations. So I'm gonna give you some equations with acceleration in them, and we're gonna do that in, see if you can handle it, 
Hot pink, baby, let's go. This one gives us a free body diagram. We need to define positive though. And uh, for the sake of uh, consistency with torque, I'm gonna say that this direction is positive. So here, X is positive that direction, and here, X is positive that direction. I hope you don't see that as inconsistent because if this guy moves that way, then that guy moves that way. We're gonna have some minus signs here because we already anticipate the acceleration is gonna be that direction. So uh, that'll be okay when we get those minus signs will be fine with that. So here's my first free body diagrams, Newton's second law. Newton's second law is where you should go immediately after doing a free body diagram every time. Newton's second law here says that net force equals mass times acceleration. And the mass is m, and the acceleration is what we don't know, and there are two forces. It looks like the downward one is positive, so I write mg minus t1. There's our Newton's second law statement for that guy. This one is gonna generate a different Newton's second law because mg is negative, so it's gonna be t2 minus m2, sorry, not m2, but 2m, times baby G, this is getting a little bit messy. It's T2 minus MG, but MG is 2MG because they called it 2M because it's twice as much as M. All right, great. Then I say this is equal to 2MA. All right, wait a second. These, M, these M's are different. Well, I mean, the letter M is different, but the masses are different. But the acceleration, the accelerations are the same. So we could plug these two equations into each other and have ourselves a party, but the problem is we've already got three variables. We've got T1, which we don't know, and we've got A, which we don't know, and we've got T2, which we don't know. We're gonna need a third equation. If you have three unknowns, dang it, you need three equations. And that's this guy over here. This guy's statement of Newton's second law is that the net torques are equal to I times alpha. That's Newton's second law for rotations. And I'm gonna switch to a more bleak color at this time because a lot of students don't really like rotations yet. But you know the moment of inertia. I'm just gonna leave it here as I, but we know what it is. And we know alpha is related to A. So instead of alpha, I'm gonna write A over aura, where this aura right here is the radius of our uh, spinny thing. And then I'm gonna go over here and look at the net torques. I've got one positive torque, and that's T1 times aura. And I've got a negative torque, and that's T2 times aura. All right, T2 is a negative torque because it's causing it to rotate clockwise, T1. Now, another huge mistake that my students made when they did this problem, is they said that these forces aren't tensions, they said they were equal to mg, and they were equal to 2mg. Now I want you to think about that for a moment. If you know that this tension is equal to mg, then it's like you've already gone over to this free body diagram and you said, by the way, I know that this mass is not accelerating. Well, if the dang mass is not accelerating, why are you doing the problem? If the mass is not accelerating, if it's in equilibrium, if you know the two forces aren't equal, stop! Just stop! Write down acceleration equals zero, professor. I'll see you Monday. Now, we can't do that because it's a hard problem. We've got ourselves three variables right here. See these three variables? Oh, nasty. I'm gonna solve this sucker for T1 minus T2. I'm factoring out an aura, and then I'm going to divide both sides by aura. I get I times A over R squared. Now, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Now, what if we even plugged in what I is? Um, um, oh, that's cool. I get three halves M R square A over R square. Whoop, 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 whoop. Awesome. This is three halves. Look at this. It's three halves MA. Three halves mass times acceleration. And it's time for us to move into a wee bit of algebra. So I'm going to scoot our setup out of the way and come back to it later. I can still trace the wounds from that knife attack here. Brown, brown, this is the poop phase. It's a whole bunch of math. I'm gonna take this guy and solve it for T1. I'm gonna take that guy and solve it for T2, and then I'm gonna plug him into this equation that's down here. Watch me go, watch me go. T1 equals mg minus ma. Did I make a mistake? 
Remember? 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 Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna take this guy and solve it for T2. That's even easier. T2 equals 2MA plus 2MG. Are we making any mistakes yet? I think we're pretty much rocking so far. Now I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna plug them into, uh, watch, I'm gonna plug them into right here. So I'm gonna get MG minus M. A minus all of this stuff, so that's minus 2MA minus 2MG equals, that's T1 minus T2 as solved by this equation and that equation equals, it's time for a color transition, let's go orange. Now, all that stuff, T1 minus T2, is supposed to be equal to three halves mass times acceleration. You see the beauty of what we've done here? We took these three equations, we plugged them in in such a way to eliminate all the tensions, and uh, it's a soothing Friday afternoon. We have eliminated all tensions. It's like a lemonade and a hammock. This equation right here is like a lemonade and a hammock because look what happens. Look what happens. I'm gonna get the purple to kill. M, 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 M. Every term has an M in it, and they are all gone. They are all, get it, eminently doomed. Did you get it? Because there's an M in it? If there's an M in it, then it's eminently, all right, let's do it. Let's do this problem. We're trying to solve for A, and there are A's all over the place. I need to write the equation again. It says G minus A minus two A's <laughs> minus two G's equals three halves A. Well, that's pretty cool. I could, uh, I could start combining some things. Over here I have negative G, and I also have minus three A equals three halves A. Ooh, it's looking kind of gross. Maybe the orange, maybe it's time to retire orange. I don't know. Let's look at this bold, we got a Sharpie violet right here. Um, I'm gonna get that over to there and I'm gonna find that this is three halves A plus three A equals negative baby G. Well, first of all, we're gonna have a negative A. Does that make you uncomfortable? I don't know, it doesn't bother me too much. How many halves is three? Looks like six halves. So we're gonna have nine halves of A is negative baby G. So A is two ninths of G, but it's negative. We knew it was negative. So I'll just multiply by negative one right there. The acceleration is two ninths of baby G. Fascinating, fascinating. Let's go back up to here and say that these guys, first of all, I had some students who did this problem and they ran into accelerations that were equal to baby G. If you run into that, then you need to say, hold up. Is it possible that they are in free fall? Did somebody cut this and cut that? And everybody says, whee, no. No, that is not possible. If you get baby G for the acceleration, chances are you made a mistake somewhere. So there are all kinds of places you can check in. Now, what about this answer? This says A equals, let me write it a little bit nicer in, um, 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 oh, let's just tear all this stuff off. Should we? Nah, let's not do that yet. Okay, A equals negative two ninths baby G. This equation right here says the acceleration, and it is only using M and R and baby G. Golly, it's only using baby G. That's a cool thing. The M's just came into this factor up front, and we just found some ratio of baby G, some, uh, some multiple of baby G, I mean. Okay, <clears throat> there were some other questions that they had asked us. Uh, remember when the professor came over and said, hey bro, we're gonna find each tension, right? So that's gonna be really easy. We've got these two equations for the tension, and all I have to do is plug in what A is. So over here, I know this is MG minus now MA, but MA is, oh gosh, look, it's negative right here. So it's going to be plus, because I'm subtracting a negative, M times two times G divided by nine. Oh my goodness, this is mg plus 2 ninths mg, that's 11 ninths mg. Cool, that's T1. That's the tension over on this side. So the tension is more than mg. That means if the tension is more than mg, then this mass will accelerate upwards. Oh, well maybe it is accelerating upwards. All right, let's do this other one. This one, we've got two times MA, and the A is negative two ninths, so I'm gonna get negative four ninths MG. 
You agree with that so far? Okay, and then I'm going to add to it 2mg. I get negative 4, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go into ninths. This is 18 ninths, and this sucker is 4 ninths that I'm taking away. That's 14 ninths. Ew! 14 ninths. Mg. Oh gosh. So, um, that's less than 2mg, right? It's less than 2mg right here. That means that this tension is less than 2mg, which means this mass will be accelerating downwards. Oh, it all comes together. It's okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Oh, and there was one last question. They said, what is the normal force on the apparatus? So to do that, I need to consider the forces on the apparatus. But to do that, I need to consider the upward force on the pulley. What is this normal force right here? Let's look at that normal force by, heck, just reopen the old wound. Check this out. Oh, sorry, got to line the camera again. Uh, 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 uh. I'm looking at this guy right here, and I'm saying that the normal force must be equal to T1 plus T2 plus 3mg. We know what T1 is. I hope you'll recall. I have it here in this puzzle piece. Uh, T1 was 11 ninths mg. It's 11 ninths mg. And then T2, check it. T2, we said, was 14 ninths mg plus 14 ninths mg plus 3 mg. Well, this is the normal force. Remember, careful, careful, careful. This is the normal force on the pulley. So it's not the normal force on the whole apparatus. We'll get there really soon, though. Uh, this is the normal force on the pulley, and it's 11, oh gosh, 25 ninths. How many ninths is that? That's 27 ninths. Holy cow. What is this, 52 ninths? Are you kidding me? Did I make a mistake? This is 25 ninths, and that's 27 ninths. How terribly inconvenient. 52 ninths mg. Blech. Okay, but that's what it is, that's what we find. But then, we also have to add on the additional mass of this guy, which is in equilibrium. So I'm gonna take, oh, so I'm gonna say Fn whole thing, this is a final calculation, Fn of the whole thing is 52 ninths mg plus four, mg. So that is, golly, another 36 ninths. Can we handle this? Another 36 ninths. That's 88 ninths mg. Now that's really interesting because 88 ninths mg is really close to 90 ninths mg. But it's not the same thing. If we had 90 ninths mg, that would be 10 mg. And I want you to go back to the original problem, and I want you to notice that the total mass is 10 m. Let's check. Let's check. See? We got m. We got 2 m. That's 3 m. Here's another 3 m. That's 6 m. Here's another 4 m. That's 10 m. And yet, the normal force on the entire thing is less than 10 mg. What does that mean? It means, my dear students, that the entire apparatus is accelerating. But which way?